welcome back to my country craft corner how in the world are you guys doing today it is so good to see you again and thank you so 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 much for coming back by to see what I'm up to and as you can see behind me I have spent the weekend deconstructing my Easter decor it is all down and everything is wiped clean kind of you know of course I've left some of my decor in place and you'll see that as we go through this little process here but today is the first episode in my I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet you guys will see that well you know now because you've seen it I'm not sure what I'm gonna call it yet pioneer woman inspired decor switch out or switch out to my pioneer woman just I don't know I'm not sure what I'm gonna call it so but anyway, I'm here today for to, to start out with episode one, and I'm going to start this episode by showing you my haul from uh, thepipberrybarn.com. It came right after, as a matter of fact, my live on Friday. It came. It was like the, the mail person drove up the driveway and plopped it in front of my garage door. I was none too happy, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I was walking down the sidewalk, and she runs around her truck and plops it in front of the garage door and hops back in her truck and waves hi and I'm like excuse me I'm right here could you walk two feet and hand it to me but no she plopped it in front of the garage door so if we opened the garage door and pulled out the van we'd run it over I'm not happy about that but regardless whatever I'm just complaining aren't I I'm sorry <laughs> But anyway, I've got my Pitberry uh, garland here, so I want to show you that first. And then we're going to sit here and we're going to do a couple of funky bows that I'm going to hang on the mantle. And I'm going to make up two very, very, very quick little uh, flower accent vases. And I'll show you that in a minute. I just picked up a couple of little vases at Joann's this morning. That's all I picked up. You're going to see what I picked up from Joann's here in this video. So but here we go with the pit berries i and this is i haven't even unwrapped them yet let me unwrap one so you guys can see got it. i got two of these and they were 26 dollars a piece so they were not on really on sale and i'm telling you this is one of the places that i will purchase things for full price and i pay shipping but this is a mixed berry I believe it was teal I think that's the name of it was teal mixed berry garland it is probably four and a half maybe five feet I don't think it's five feet but I'm going to be using this mostly for my lanterns I believe I'm going to be doing three lantern centerpieces or well I'm fibbing two lantern centerpieces and one kind of standalone lantern so and I've got two uh, garlands so I think I'm just going to be using these for the lanterns and there will be a nice accent you know color to put in with the lanterns and the florals and stuff that I have with the lantern so I got two of those here's the other one still wrapped up and then I got only got one pick <laughs> and that's all I got and this is like a mixed uh, berry and not mixed berry but it's mixed colored pit berries it's blue and like a navy blue and then a lighter blue and then you can see the rusty stars in there and if i want to they consider this at the pitberry barn which i think is amazing as one pick that is considered one pick but in reality it's one two you can see one two three four five six picks you guys but they consider it they sell it as one pick but look how many really come I'm telling you, I love this place. Love, love, love the pitberrybarn.com. Please, if you, if you, and, and I will say they are not cheap. They are not, but the products are worth every penny. They last for a long time, forever. I've never had to throw one of my pitberry garlands away from the pitberrybarn.com, honestly, unless I've put it outside or something for a long time. I would not buy one of these garlands to use outdoors. I only use them indoors but they have a wonderful product and you get a lot for your money as obviously because you, I could pull this apart and very well might pull this apart and use it six different ways you know so 
There we go. There is my Pip Fairy barn. I'm going to go ahead and take this off of here, too. Haul. And that was all I bought because I didn't really need anything else. I have, I have, um, <clears throat> y'all saw the other Pip Berries that I had purchased not too long ago. It's been since Christmas since I purchased that other, that other order, you know. So I have cream. I have the mixed berry cream ones and some other Pip Berries, too. And as I said, I only want a touch of this color. I don't need this. This will be my pop of color pretty much in this decor, though. This and, and darker tones of that. Excuse my ruffling, rustling of the bags. <laughs> but anyway, after I'm done doing my two funky bows here, I'm making the two funky bows for the mantle. And I'm going to hang it on either side of the Pipberry Garland. My regular Pipberry Bar and the Pipberry Garland that I have hanging there all the time except for you know fall and christmas throughout the rest of the year that is the pitberry garland i have hanging up there and i'm making funky bows for either side of that and then these little arrangements to set up on the mantle and then i'll take, let me pull my camera over here and get it turned down and pointed down so that you guys can watch me and i'll show you these two little vases that i bought and we'll try to you know come up with a couple little arrangements very simple simple little arrangements remember less is more sometimes you know I don't need to have like Christmas, you know, Christmas is big and bold and loud, you know, and fall is too for me. This is gonna be more subtle and just soft, I hope. So I'll be right back and I'll have my camera in place and we'll get started on two little vases and two funky bows. I'll be right back in just a second. Okie dokie everyone, I'm back. And here are the two little vases that I was talking about. They're just green in color and just very simple little glass vases. I thought, I would, and then I just found these little, you know, berries, little green berries. Not quite that color, but you know, within the same hue. So I thought I would just very simply put one or two of these. Should have taken the price tags off, sorry. Along with just a Pipberry pick, just one from Joann's. And it was $1.99, but it was 50% off. I don't know whether I'll need two of the green or not. I could put two in. I couldn't, I only found two, a total of two Pipberry picks. So let me see here. Very, very simple. Just a touch. You know? I don't know whether I can fit. Yeah, I can. Just a touch. Doesn't have to be anything major. Doesn't have to be anything over the top. You know? Two more of these. And I just, this is simply to pull in this little bit of this green color up and into the mantle. Because I really don't have everything else is kind of the candlesticks are black, the candles themselves are cream. I'm going to have this color green candles in the black candle holders that flank the uh, clock up there. And then I have willow tree figurines and a couple of Dickens houses. And... There's not a lot of color, so I wanted to pull just a bit of color in to the mantle. And I also, I have, what, three, three more of these that I can maybe lay on the mantle? I'm not sure. I'll figure that out when I get over there. But just very simply. Huh. So we'll see how they look. 
hopefully they'll look okay. I also got uh, just three little birds. I could even, they have clips. That's cute. I might need to fix them better when I get it over there. Anyway, I'll see what I can do when I get them over there. So there we go. What was my thought for those? <laughs> Something very simple, like I said. I have one bird and three of those left. So three of the green berries. Now, let's get started on some funky bows. Hey everyone, well, here I am, as you can see, dressed completely differently than how I was dressed yesterday. I finished the whole video for Monday. Today is Sunday, I had taped that yesterday on Saturday. I was not happy with what I did. I just, you know, I, as much as I love this floral, this particular floral, uh, the black with the black and I did it with cream and I did two funky bows and you know went through all of that with just the two ribbons I put it up on the panel and put my little green you know uh, little flower arrangements which I'm gonna keep but I'll show you what I'm gonna do up there it just there was something missing it wasn't calling out pioneer woman to me which is what i really want to do i really want to you know use the pretty colors that the pioneer woman uses in her decor or in her dishes and so on all of her stuff so i came in and chris is like well, I, we went out to walmart i said we need to go to walmart <laughs> and he said okay why do we need to go to Walmart?" i said i just need i'll know it when i see it i just need to pick up something else for the mantle to pull in the Pioneer Woman. So into Walmart we went and I picked up, these are not what I'm using on the mail, these are bigger plates, uh, but I bought two like salad size plates in this pattern. And I have them flanking the clock right now, or kind of on the edges. But anyway, I am going to make two new funky bows today. Not that you are, have even seen the others other than just what I've shown you. <laughs> But I'm going to go ahead and make, using this floral, hopefully I'll have enough, since I'm only making 20 inch strips, I should. Uh, but I'm going to combine them with these three ribbons. Now, doesn't that call out the red up there too? Uh, the pioneer woman look so I think that these funky bows are going to be a lot better than those funky bows and I hope I have enough of this yellow I don't know I don't this is all I have left because I used it at Easter too so I'm gonna turn my camera around again and get started this just goes to show you I'm showing you warts and all I mean I wouldn't have had to tell you any of this obviously I could have just you know created everything as if it was you know my perfect idea to begin with but I'm showing you this to show you that I am in no way close to perfect and that I do change my mind and I have, I lose sleep sometimes, you guys, over this stuff, which is what happened to me last night. I just was not happy with the mantle. That was not how I wanted to start out this decor. It, it didn't scream. I don't want it to scream, Pioneer Woman, but I just wanted to give it a nod, you know, and I needed something Pioneer Woman up there to start out this decor. So, <laughs> all that said, I'm gonna turn this camera down, or around and point it down, and we're gonna make some more funky bows. <laughs> and hopefully, I'll take you over there. I'm looking for, I have two red birds as well, uh, two metal red birds. I'm hoping I can find those. I think they're downstairs in a bin. When I took all of my uh, Christmas, to, or not my Christmas, but my cozy country decor, I think I put them in a bin downstairs. I've just got to find them, and I do kind of want to try to add those to the mix up there, too. 
Uh, first thing though, before I move on to the funky bows here, I did want to add, I know these are puppies, I believe. I don't have red roses, which is really, I guess, I don't know, you guys who know your flowers better than I, but I want to add a red posy or whatever. I don't, I wish they were the same color inside as they are these, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. This is as close as I can get. So I'm going to, do I have my nippers here? I thought I had my snippers here. Hang on, let me go get my snippers. I'll be right back. We're here at the table. They were hidden underneath that stuff over there. Okay, anyway, all right, here I am back with my snippers and I'm just going to snip off a little bit of this. Wait a minute, let me turn my camera off. I'll be right back. Okay, all I wanna do is just, I snipped off a little bit off the bottom of this. All I wanna do is just kind of lift this up a little bit and stick one of these flowers right in the front to help bring the red into this little grouping here. You know what is bugging the heck out of me is this one little pearl or one little berry. There we go. All I'm going to do is stick that right down in there and that is going to bring the red right into this decor. Love it. No idea what I'm going to do with those and I've thought about putting them in my kitchen windows and I very well might but I think I'm actually going to use my country plates for up there for one thing these could get knocked over and broken really easy out of my windows and I can put one here I have a plate holder right there and then maybe set the other one up here in my in my hutch so I am going to use these for decorating though not to eat off of <laughs> all right so let's make some funky bows I think I'm going to make a 12 loop funky bow, which means I need three, I'm gonna do the yellow first if I have enough. I need three strips, actually I need six strips, three per bow. Six strips at 20 of each ribbon. Three for each bow. So let's see, if I have enough of this, and I have enough of everything else and we'll be good to go. So let me see if I can get six strips out of this. goodness are we gonna make it one more Woo. yay okay Let me go ahead and show you how I dovetail and I still have just a little bit left so if I need to maybe stick it somewhere else I can stick it somewhere else I think this is all I have anyway I'm not throwing that away that's for sure because there is a smidge of yellow in her decor. So, all right. The way I dovetail, just in case you've never seen me do a funky bow, or any bow for that matter, is I fold my material in half lengthwise. And a lot of people go to the fold and cut down. I like to be different. <laughs> Not really. This is just the way I learned how to do it, is I start from the edge and cut up. So that's the way I do it. So let me go ahead and get the rest of this ribbon cut. I need three or six of each one of these because I'm going to cut enough for each for both bows. And then I'll come back and we'll do a funky bow tutorial. So I'll speed on through all this cutting 
and dovetailing. I'll be right back. Okie dokie, I'm back. I have my pipe cleaners. And as you can see, I have cut three strips of each type of ribbon. And as, as you'll see, I have changed the stripes to polka dots. Changed my mind again. <laughs> and the reason I did that was simple, is because the backs of these are polka dotted. And, you know, there's not polka dots on the patchwork placemats that I'm going to be using on the table, but there's a bit of uh, one of the squares that looks kind of polka dot, polka dotty. It is uh, like a bandana type of material, but I think this, the, the polka dots will pull that in nicely. So anyway, I'm going to use red and white polka dots instead of red and white stripes. I am now ready to make my funky bows. And let me explain why I cut them. For those of you who might not have ever seen me make a funky bow, let me explain my process to you. Each strip, as you know, is 20 inches long. I want five inch tails on this funky bow. So if you go to five on the board, and then I want a five inch loop. So therefore I'm gonna need 10 inches worth of material to pull together to make a five inch loop and that leaves me with a five inch tail on this side so that's my thinking and this is an even numbered bow an even numbered looped bow so therefore this is the way I figured out how to do the funky bow let me say first that I am NOT the creator of the funky bow uh, a girl over there at Southern Charms wreaths lovely lady named Julie Samaka she as far as I know, for me, she is the one who created the funky bow. I had not seen it before I saw her do it. I don't know whether she's the inventor of it, but if she is, I appreciate her <laughs> because I love the funky bow. Now, I have tweaked it to do what I wanted to do. Uh, so, And I make each bow differently. I don't make them all the same. I don't make each bow the same, but it is the same process. So anyway, so all you do is you simply fold this in half. And I didn't even used to do this until one of you subbies told me this. I'm, Arlene, why don't you just fold it in half? I'm like, duh, why indeed? So anyway, just fold each strip in half. And I put it down on my board here and I find, you know, from 10 to 15 is what I'm doing. But I need a five inch loop. So 10 to 15 is a five inch loop. I pinch it together right there. And then I go to the back tail, the one that's in the back, and I twist it to bring the right side forward. Like that. Now for this bow, I'm going to do each color. As you can see, I have them laid out in a pattern and I'm gonna do each color one direction, one time. And then I'm going to flip it and do the loops the other direction. I'm gonna point the loops to uh, of all four of these colors up. Up meaning up from center, which is my thumb. So, and then the next time we're gonna flip it and we're going to go down from center. We're gonna point the loop down. So let's get on with this and I'll show you the whole process here. 50, uh, five inch or five inch loop, pinch it together. Go to the back and twist that back tail forward. Next one, five inch loop, pinch it together. Go to the back, twist. This one you really need to do it. Some of these ribbons are two-sided and it really doesn't matter, except for texture-wise. Sometimes texture-wise, it does make a difference. But this one, you can definitely see, has a back and a front, and we want that front side facing forward because these are gonna face up and come up and through this bow. Okay, so last one in this first set of, this first part of the pattern, let's put it that way. Go to 
five inch loop and then twist. There we go. Okay, so there we go. The first four colors or patterns going up from center, which is my thumb. So next time, now we're going to start over again. Same process, find ourselves a five inch loop, flip it the other direction so that the loop is pointing down and the tails are pointing up. Still, same process, twist that back tail so that the front side or right side is pointed up. And on we go. Five inch loop, turn it, pinch it. Find that back tail. I didn't quite get that in all the way in half. That's not a problem, trust me. Don't worry about that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Remember what I say in crafting, there are no mistakes, only unique creations. And I really do feel that way. I really do feel that way. If you try to be perfect at anything, well, none of us will succeed, huh? We can try, you can always try to get there. Turn it and pinch it. There's Sam, it's time for them to eat. He's clicking on by there, off to get his food. Here he goes. There he goes. <laughs> All right, so that's the second time through the pattern. And now we're gonna do it one more time, but we're gonna go, we're gonna point the loops up from center again. Here's my thumb that's getting in. We're gonna go up from center again. So again, fold the piece, the strip in half, find five inches and pinch. And by this time, your hand will not be happy with you, this hand. The hand you're using to hold the bow shot with, but persevere, you can do it. And I am gonna speed up a little bit because my hand is, is screaming at me a little bit. Five inches, pinch, and twist. Two more. Then I get to do another one. <laughs> I won't make y'all sit through that. I'll get that one started and I'll speed on through that. And twist, and one more. Okay. Now, let's get this twisted around here. Get your pipe cleaner, find the center point as close as you can to your pipe cleaner. Lay it across beside your thumb and kind of try to lift that thumb up and grab it with your thumb and pull it around to the back. Use the hand that you've made the bow with as resistance and twist, twist, twist. Shake out that hand. Before I start fluffing, that's the next thing is we're going to fluff the bow. But first thing I want to do is to make a tail. I want to make two tails. So I need, I'm going to go ahead and cut it for the, for the second bow too. So I need two strips at 30 because I want about 15 inch tails. I will most likely trim them up. I am going to, this is the only bolt of this ribbon that I could find at Hobby Lobby. I did get this ribbon at Hobby Lobby for those of you who didn't see that haul. And this was the only color. I'm going to be doing that lantern. So I may need to get creative with how in the world I do that funky bow because I do want to use some of this. So we'll have to see what I come up with there. Okay, so that'll be for the other. Okay, before I get started fluffing, I want to go ahead and just fold this in half too. Don't worry about dovetailing it. And just lay it down, right side down, and twist the twist try once. And then you want to take your uh, one of your tails, it doesn't matter, go one direction or the other, and twist it to turn the right side in the same direction as this right side so that when you lift the bow up that's the right side of the ribbon 
and go ahead and catch that twisted part into your pipe cleaner. Alrighty, so now let's see if I can do a little bit of magic here with this bow and, and anybody can make a funky bow, you guys. All you have to do is try and the most important thing about any craft bow that you make is the fluffing. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Really get down to where you cinched it close with the pipe cleaner and really yank on those loops and make them as big as you can. And pull them to the to the top and to the front. And if you if some of the tails get intertwined in, in between the loops, that's perfectly fine. Try to separate out all your colors though. I'm missing a this. There we go. Where's my other one? There's my other red one. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be like, you know, There we go. I am liking this so much more already. Yep, I think that's going to look nice. You can see what it, it's a whole different feel. This bow is a whole different feel. This is more subdued and classy, classic, definitely. But I'm not going necessarily for classic. Not that this can't go somewhere else. But I wanted this to start out my decor. I wanted to be pioneer woman inspired, and that's what this is to me. And as I say, I'm not perfect. I, I sometimes don't envision things perfectly at first, and I certainly didn't this time. And I lost a night's sleep over it. <laughs> but I'm on a roll now. I'm cooking with gas now. All right, so that's good enough for this moment. I can, I'll tweak it more when I get it up on the mantle. For now, I'm loving it. That looks great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start this next one and, but I will probably speed through that one just a little bit. So you guys are not bored to tears. Same process, that will get it started. Fold it in half, find five inches, pinch it together. And we're gonna do the first four up from center. If I have a even looped bow, I tend to do this. If I have an odd looped bow, I tend to switch the directions every time. It just depends on how I want the bow to look and feel, so. All right, and third color. Whoops, I don't want that. I want, I like to, even though it does get all a jumble when you get it into the bow, I still like to start it out like pattern solid, pattern solid, you know? So here we go. I love this red polka dot. I think this is just super cute. twist and then one more if you measure your loops that way you know that like I'm making two oops two bows and they're going to be on either side of my mantle so I want them to be as close to the same size as I can by measuring I'm pretty much assured that I'm going to get it to be the same size so there we go, first four up. Now, there, there's the puppies outside. <laughs> next way through the, next time through the pattern, we're gonna be pointed down from center. We'll go through each color this way and then we'll flip it and go up from center again for the last four. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed on through the rest of this so you don't have to be bored. And I will be back when I'm done putting this funky bow together. Okay. 
Okie dokie, there we go. As you can see, they're both about the same size with the same kind of tails on them. So, next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead on over here to my mantle, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these up. All I do to put them on the, I'm gonna show you how we hold our pipberry garland up too while I'm over there, but all I do, and you'll see, I'll show you a hook that I hook these on, and all I do is make a little loop with my pipe cleaner in the back and I hook the hook, the little loop down over the hook. So I'm gonna do that. And I just usually use my one finger as a guide as to how hot, big the loop is. And I need to run to my basement and see if I can't find those two little red birds that I was talking about. Let me go, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these, I think, up while I'm here. And I'm gonna say that this one is gonna hang on the right-hand side of the car, or of the mantle. And I want this side to hang a little lower Than the inner loop. So I'm going to cut that loop up at an angle and then I'm going to start this loop where this one, where the short end on this one is. Or not loop, but tail. Sorry. And cut up at an angle like this. And then this side, see how they fall here. This will be the left-hand side of the mantle here. I'm just eyeballing in here to kind of get them to be the same length. And I can always tweak them once I get them hung up. I'm gonna say that's close. Up at an angle. And then again, start this one going up at an angle where the short end of this one stopped. And go up at an angle, like that. All right, I'm gonna run to my basement real quick, see if I can find those birds, and then I'll show you the finished product when I get everything set up. Be right back in a few minutes. Okie dokie, I'm gonna start back here and show you the entire thing. There's really bright light coming in from the windows over here to the left. Sorry about that, I'm gonna move in though, pretty quick here. But there is the finished mantle. Woohoo! I am super happy with it now. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep better tonight, that's for sure. Buying these two plates, which were like four bucks a piece, just made me feel so much better. Finding the red birds, digging out the red flowers, and making new funky bows with ribbon I already had here. You know, of course I hauled this couple weeks ago but oh my goodness I love it the funky bows pull it all together I love it I love the feeling that I'm getting from this it is a nod to the pioneer woman definitely definitely let me show you real quick while I'm here how we attach this pip berry to the mantle. As you can see, Chris has a command strip back there. Excuse my dust. Actually, that's not dust. That's kind of scruff marks up there. But you can see that he has a command strip up there and it has a little hook on it. And then he has a wire curve hanger kind of bent into an inverted V. And then he has two hooks. One for there and one there. And the hooks are bent so that they hold the coat hanger on, which in turn, of course, holds the funky bow on. And then I just put my little pipe cleaner down over that hook. And that is how I hook things onto the mandel. You can also see here, he has two more pieces of the coat hanger bent out and bent up into a hook. 
and he has a, a little hook on the end of it and hooked onto a command strip back there. So that's the way, really high tech stuff there, huh? <laughs> a wire coat hanger and some, com some command strips. But anyway, I'm really happy with this. So, so this will do it for episode one in my Pioneer Woman Inspired Decor. I'm loving it. Now I'm in a conundrum <laughs> about my hearth. Remember I bought that cream colored lantern to go on the hearth? Well, I'm changing my mind. I think I want to leave the red lantern down there to pull in the red, to help, to pull, help me pull in the red. I think the box is going to retire and I think that pillow is going to move over onto the hearth and be next to the red lantern decor. I'm not sure. I'm just going to put a, make a funky bow for on top of that and of course use my teal colored pip berries that I just showed you around that and I'm not sure what else. And then on this side I think I have a picture and I don't know I'll come up with something but I think I'm going to retire. Remember that cream really pretty cream lantern I bought with the wrought iron top. I think I'm going to retire this one for a season and I think I'm going to use that one right here for this decor. So anyway, episode one is complete and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okie dokie. I just wanted to come back here so I could look at you and, and kind of give you my last you words. Say I that I hope that all is well with everyone. And I hope that everybody's health is going along as it should and that nobody is struggling or suffering with chronic pain or worse. And if you are, I hope that you have good doctors who are helping you through this and have faith that you'll come through. You all are always in my thoughts and prayers, and I love you all to pieces. <laughs> I hope that there's nothing that is nagging at you and pulling on you, pulling your attention away from where it should be or where you want it to be. And one more thing, like I said when I was making the funky bow, just remember that in crafting, there are no mistakes, only unique creations. Trust your mind, trust your gut, and try something new like this. You know, might be surprised at what you come up with. All right, you guys, I'll see you in episode two whenever I get that done. <laughs> but for now, I'm just going to say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.